Alrighty, back with another one here in a 66 Impala. This is the Willwood master cylinder here. And on a prior video, you can see I finally got the brake booster installed. And today is pretty much just a brake bleeding and installation of the master cylinder. As you can see here, these, uh, these the proportional valve, the lines, everything came separate in the box, but I kind of just hand fitted everything. But before I go ahead and tighten everything, I got some uh, so Permatex thread sealant, which I'm gonna use just to dab a little on the thread here so that I have a nice seal. And then I'll pretty much take it from there with the next video. Okay, as you can see here, finally got some thread sealing within the threads there. And I'm going to go ahead and bolt those down and then I'll continue to the next step. Alrighty, YouTube. Well, I'm back with another one here. Finally got the master cylinder installed attached to the brake booster. And uh, rather than to single bleed this on a table, because of what I'm using here, it could have did it that way, but I do have an extra person with me. So what I'll attempt to do, I'll fill this up with oil. I'll get the bottom lines ran. Well, not as of yet, because I want to make sure. I'm actually going to see if I could attach my uh, lines here to actually bleed from the top here. So if the tubes are long enough, that, that's what I'll pretty much do, and I'll take it from there. Alrighty, YouTube, still proceeding with the uh, install of the brake booster. Now I got a little short issue here. I gotta run a line that's going to connect here and connect to the bottom of the uh, proportional valve here. So I came up with a little method here. I got this little line, something that I purchased from Amazon and I have two fittings on there. And uh, I have already messed one up. What I did, I bent it and I, uh, it was just so short, the curvature here, it was actually bent. So when I tried to get it in my uh, tool here to create the birth of the line, it was just too short. I could not get it in good. So it's better to have the line straight to actually do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep this straight and then after I have everything set up here, I'll actually bend it to the uh, right position that I need in and out shoot another video from there after I'm done. But this is it, it's pretty much just one straight copper line with two fittings. I'm gonna create the ends here to actually keep these two bolts stable and then I'll take it from there. Alrighty, and as you can see here, finally got this uh, little line piece done here for the connection that runs from the passenger side, front side, to the proportional valve here. And it's pretty much just a small area. So what I'll do, I'll try to coil this line here and then I'll run it up to connect it into the proportional valve here. And the tool that I use to do this, it's a tool that I bought from eBay, it's a Capri, and I tell you it works real good to flare the lines here. It actually does a good job if I could focus in. Well, I guess I can't, but, but it did a good job though. Okay, back with another one here, and I pretty much got the first line. Just test fit, testing everything out, making sure that it goes good. Now, this is running from the passenger side and up into the proportional valve. And I'm focusing now on the driver's side here. Pretty much just a long pipe that I have here. And I'm going to bend it to my likings so that it can go up to marry the upper side of the driver's side of the uh proportional valve. And now before I do that, you know, these tubings here, they have to be burred. And what I'm using to do that is one of these uh, Christmas tree fittings here. Kind of just put it there and it actually works real good for me. I'm not sure what size this is, but you want to do it so that it's not too smaller than your 316th or too bigger than your 316th, but it fits in there good. And then when I'm satisfied to how the tube is burred here, uh, and I'll pretty much use my other tool to do the fittings here to get it to fit. All right, back with the uh, other section of the video here. And as you can see, I finally got the uh, 
master cylinder hooked up to the brake booster here and I've been uh, running some lines as you can see here some copper lines very easy to bend and as you can see here pretty much got the two front portions connected but I got a problem with the uh, rear line where this is a 3 16th and I believe this one is a 3 8 so I'm gonna have to get a union that would pretty much marry these two together, which I don't have. Not even sure if things like that are sold, but I would have to look around. But this is pretty much it here. Working on the lines here and pretty much hooking everything up. And uh, when I do get that other line, I'll pretty much upload another video of the final work here. Alrighty, back with another one here. And this is pretty much just on a rear brake line installation and as you can see here from the wheel woods trying to figure out how can I do this this original line here actually reached all the way over to where the drum brake sat over here but since this wheel wood kit it came with like a threaded line I had a lot of slack there and this is kind of hanging but I think it's safe to where it's not gonna come in contact with the spring so I'll leave it like that Pretty much trying to do it as neat as I can, but at the same time, don't want any uh, accidents or danger. And uh, I'll show you what I put together here. This is actually it, and it's running from the line that's here. And I have these two pieces. I went to my local Home Depot and I got a pipe strap. And I ordered these off of uh, either eBay or Amazon. I kind of saw a, a pamphlet of one and I thought I'd make it myself. It seemed pretty easy, but I actually ordered this piece and then I went and purchased this. And what I'm doing, I kind of flatten out this edge and I just let this sit there. And it has a little hole in the area in the back here, which I actually can use for a spot weld. And that's where my welder comes in here. And I'm actually welding it together and then I create this uh, brake line strap that works good. I'll attempt to do the other side and then I'll take it from there but I'll also show you my brake line connections. Okay and I'm gonna attempt to weld this piece together to create another bracket for the axle here for the brake line and I'm pretty much just gonna take my weld and I'll weld through here and that's the step that I did. Alrighty, back with another one here, and I kinda just wanna show you my weld. My first one actually came out better than my uh, second one did. But uh, this is it. I'm not a professional, but I'm trying. This time I kinda did a burn through. I held the uh, welder in place too long and it kinda just burned through the metal. But for what I'm trying to do, this is good enough. I'm pretty much just gonna grab a wire wheel and I'll clean it down and then should be okay to do its job. I may just end the net, uh, weld another strip on this outer side of the uh, brace just for some extra protection here. Okay, and this is my pretty much my cleanup here. I don't want to say it's not good, but I don't want to say it's not bad, but my first one actually came out way much better than this, but with a little bit more practice, I believe things will get better as I plan to actually work on this whole car here. And this is it, YouTube. I'm pretty much going to go ahead and install this, and then I'll uh, just upload some more pictures, photos of all of the brake line connections. Alrighty, now for this portion here, I'm pretty much just going to walk you through the job that I did here. And as you can see, all the lines are pretty much installed. And I kind of just did some coiling to get everything to connect here. Driver's front side and then the passenger front side. I had to use a union. And also for that rear, I also used a union. That way everything married to their proper places. And just run it under the engine here. And this is where I did the connection. I got some more braces. I'm pretty much gonna try to weld this to the frame here, just for some stability. And as we come to the rear here, 
pretty much just did the rear. Did not want everything too tight, gave it some slack. But this is the other bracket that I put together that's running from the Woolwood brake lines also. And I got an issue here with the e-braking. I'm gonna have to do something with this. Maybe I'm gonna have to uh, contact Willwood to see if there's something else I could do. But as I run it through the fitting here where it runs, try to get it in there with one hand, pretty much just runs through there. And there's this little clip that clips into this hook area here. But now the problem I have is that there's not enough slack in this line for me to actually run it to the, I don't wanna say lower control arm because that's a part that also moves, but just enough slack to where, cause when this car is bouncing up and down, these parts are actually stretching and we don't want that, that can be dangerous. So I'm gonna have to do something with this e-brake cable that actually runs here. It's just not long enough. And it's too tight for my liking, especially for a part that moves up and down. And as we come to this side, you can actually see that it's pretty much ran there. As I come around here, you can see that connection that leads to the rear brake line here. Alrighty, we'll take it from there, you two.